Today on Can Rendezvous, we are meeting the actress Jessica Chastain. Now, three years ago, she was a relative unknown when she came here to Cannes with Terence Malick's The Tree of Life. But that film won the Palme d'Or, and ever since then, Jessica has been a firm fixture on the Hollywood A-list. Now she's back at the festival with a film called The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby, which is playing in the Ancerta Regard sidebar competition. It is a true passion project for Jessica, who not only stars, but is also listed as co-producer. I went to catch up with her alongside co-star Jess Weixler and writer-director Ned Benson. Hi there, Jessica. Very Hello. nice to meet you. Very much enjoyed your film, uh, The Disappearance of Eleanor Rigby. Um, now, just first off, uh, to clear things up, it's not at all about the Beatles, this film. <laughs> No. Uh, Eleanor Rigby is called Eleanor Rigby because her parents met at one of the Hope's uh, Beatles concert and uh, they fell in love. The father's name, last name was Rigby, so they named their first child Eleanor Rigby. They have a beautiful, um, lovely relationship and Eleanor is the product of that. It's actually a very sad film. Yeah. Uh, it's about a married couple in their 30s, they're grieving for the loss of a child. Um, how do you prepare for a role that's so difficult, so sensitive? I read a lot when I'm preparing for a role like this. I read a lot of interviews about women who had lost children. I read some short stories in The New Yorker that Ned had given me. And one recurring theme I found with women was the idea of reinvention, like from the phoenix ashes, you know, from the ashes the phoenix rises. There's this idea of rebirth or wanting to start again. Um, and that definitely related to Eleanor for me. And this film is about a very difficult and sensitive subject, um, and you are playing her sister. How does one prepare for this kind of role? While we were preparing this, it was fascinating because I was trying to gain weight for the role because <laughs> I wanted her to be kind of the dumpy loser younger sister that still lived at home and worked in a library, and, and she was getting more depressed and wanted to look gaunt so she was like juice fasting while I was like eating as much ice cream and <laughs> pasta as I possibly could so it was fascinating for us prepping because she was like becoming so frustrated <laughs> with like coming in the house because we were rooming together while we were shooting and have been roommates at several different points in our life along the way well originally I had wanted to write a love story but more about relationships and the hardships we go through in relationships and how that affects the relationship um, and ultimately how people can cope in completely different ways while going through the same thing and ultimately that can drive them apart but the crazy thing is is that they're the only two people that had to experience this thing so they're the only pe two people who have the appropriate language for it and the appropriate experience so I think it's about two people who lose each other and then have to realize that they're the only two people who can understand each other and what they went through. And as a uh, up-and-coming independent filmmaker, how much of a difference did it make having the star power of the name Jessica Chastain behind this? Well, I mean, you know, once once her career took off, it, it helped the film enormously. I mean, it, it, it got us attention and it, it got us uh, traction and, you know, all of a sudden we were uh, you know, uh, gathering this whole beautiful collaboration around us and, and uh, yeah, it was obviously really helpful. I mean, she's an, am an amazing collaborator as an actor, but also as a friend and as a producer. So. You mentioned at the Cannes premiere that you've been involved uh, with the crew of this film uh, for a very long time. They're friends, in fact. Tell us how that came about, your involvement. We've all known each other for over 10 years. Jess Weixler and I have known each other for 15 years. We went to Juilliard together. Um, and I was with Ned every day that he was writing uh, the script and we developed it together and it's very special because the past three years my film has taken off, my film, my career has taken off and they've celebrated me and supported me and now I get to be here at this festival and celebrate and support them and see my friends have their dreams come true. And this film originally screened as a two-parter, that was how it was conceived. 
uh, the man's side and the and the wife's side of the story. Here at Cannes, we've been shown them, the both brought together. How do you feel about this uh, new third version? Well, this is not the definitive or final version of the film. I compare it to Olivier Assayas' film Carlos, which I think is an incredible film with um, Edgar Ramirez. There's like a five-hour version of that, and then there's the two-hour version of that. It's the same story, but one is shorter. I'm the cinephile who loves the five-hour version, so we have that with, it's not five hours, it's three. We have him and her, and then we also have them. You sat and watched the premiere together at Cannes uh, with a whole lot of random journalists, including myself, um, and lots of reaction at Cannes, isn't there? How is it to watch a film with uh, your audience around you? It's a beautiful feeling, because you make something to, to give it away, to share it. You definitely don't want to... It's, it's just nice to see if it reaches other people, because you know it matters to you, and. It's nice when other people get it or they relate to it. And you're, of course, not a stranger to Cannes at all. We could all remember you coming here in 2011 with Tree of Life, which yes. won the Palme d'Or. Yes. How was that experience for you? It was incredible. It was three years ago. I was here with Tree of Life and with Take Shelter, which won the Grand Prix at Critics Week. And it was the beginning of my career because that was a huge festival for me. And it started... What, what has become the best three years of my career. Since then, I mean, you've been nominated for an Oscar, uh, you've become a red carpet fashion icon. Aww. How are things different for you? It's amazing. I get to be on sets with people that I really admire. You know, I just did Interstellar with Christopher Nolan, and I worked on Crimson Peak with Guillermo del Toro. Um, it's incredible. You do still tread the boards in theatre, don't you? Uh, some people might be tempted to just take the big movie checks. <laughs> Theatre's quite a lot of hard work, isn't it? Yeah. Why do you keep uh, doing theatre? Well, I started in theatre. I went to Juilliard, I studied theatre. Um, I'll always go back. I think it's important to continue to challenge yourself. OK, well, I wish you a very good festival. Thank you very much. Thanks very much for talking to me. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's been really nice. It's too good. <laughs> <laughs>